the steering is tight as hell, guys. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's as good as it's gonna get because it's all new. Yeah. Well, I'm saying it's new. I restored this car eight years ago. It so is this, still this, like is, new. this is eight year old wow, restoration. Wow, so. wow. And it's like this underneath it is rotisserie restored in my shop. I'm struggling to turn this off. <laughs> I can't turn my smile off. QQ1. QQ1. Some wombat probably made that up in Japan and they translated it and that's what it meant. I'm telling you, there's no Detroit uh, muscle in that name. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. Look at beautiful stars, I wanna drive a faster car. Hedonism is defined as the pursuit of pleasure, sensual self-indulgence, so petrohedonism is obviously the pursuit of automotive joy by appreciating the sights and sounds of incredible vehicles. Oh yes, this is definitely what the first ever petrohedonism live event at Nebworth was all about. In this video, you'll see me prepare for the Petronism live event the day before it started. I had to move some incredibly amazing and very expensive cars into the elite cars area in front of the stage. Hopefully you'll get a sense of how wonderful a task this was from the video as I moved the famous Gas Monkey shop truck and a stunning 1968 Dodge Charger. So I've already told you once and I'll tell you again, I will definitely, definitely, definitely not be doing donuts in the Gas Monkey donut truck. <laughs> so this, okay. My love for Gas Monkey was back in the day when Richard, Big Chris, all the lads had a very small shop which turned into the Misfits garage shop. And this was the shop truck. And uh, it came to the UK, Chris sold it over here. And, um, oh, oh, I love it. But there's a problem. Seems to be clutchless, it's automatic. So we've, I think it's automatic. Oh, is there one way to find out? Right. Okay. It's automatic. Right, I'm gonna go move the gas monkey truck. See you in a bit. Guys, so straight away, I'm noticing a couple of things. It started first time. The steering is tight, the accelerator is very responsive, therefore giving me an indication it's got some power behind it. I can see why Big Chris and a Richard Rollins would do, be doing some lovely donuts in this bad boy. But um, it doesn't get cooler, and then I'm just about to drive past by my mates at the Ace Auto Electrics. Go check them out, they're amazing. If you've got problems with your car, these are the guys to hook you up. How you doing? <laughs> nice truck, man. Guys, they're amazing, go check them out. But guys, this truck, the steering is tight, it's smooth, it's got a modern stereo, it's got air conditioning. It's just cool, man. Like, this is like, this is Gas Monkey through and through. Like, I don't think, you know, when you think about Gas Monkey and you're my age, you know, you may have seen a lot of the modern builds, but realistically, looking back, him and Aaron starting the shop years ago, this was what it was about. It was about the rawness, it was about the patina, it was about being slightly modified and slightly custom, but still being something unique. And uh, the gas monkey truck for me, this is quite literally my most exciting vehicle that I've driven today, guys. It's absolutely amazing. And guys, please go out and check Richard out. He's got his new YouTube channel, which is taking off like hotcakes. It is amazing. And um, he's gonna be here this weekend at Petronism Live, and it's gonna be nice to, uh, to maybe get his view on this old bad boy truck. Like, just love it. Absolutely love it. No, it doesn't get any cooler. We're in park, guys, and we still got a lot more cars to try out. But um, I don't think I've ever had so much um, responsibility. I mean, my lovely lady told me that kids were a responsibility. I've got two of them. i got a bit of a problem. <sighs> Just, you break it? I'm struggling to turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I can't turn my smile off. Oh my God. Never in my wildest dreams, seven, eight years ago when I went and met Richard, would I ever imagine driving his truck. Like, look at the hairs standing up on my arm, okay? Life's complete, guys. Like, I've got kids, I've got a beautiful wife. I've locked that door, need to unlock it again. I've got to drive the gas monkey truck, guys. I mean, if there's one thing I get to take away from Petrolism Live is I've got to drive this bad boy. Truly an amazing experience. And on that note, I'm gonna take it for another drive. After Petrol Hedonism Live finished, with a can of Miller Lite never far from his hand, Richard signed the glove box, which made that wonderful shop truck even cooler in my eyes. This was after I provided the keys so that you could get into the cab, of course. <laughs> I do have my uses sometimes. Hopefully you've seen the first Petrol Hedonism live snippet where we showed you three of the top muscle cars that participated in the show. Well, we heard from the owner Christian Gort, who runs his own restoration shop in Doncaster. And now we're gonna hear from him again because he was kind enough to let me loose with his prize winning charger. Guys, Petrol Hedonism Live would not be complete if it wasn't for a 1968 Dodge Charger. Guys, if you don't know what the difference is, a 68 is a wide open mouth, a 69 has a little V in the middle, and a 70 has got a big chrome ugly bead, which is my favorite around the outside. But little Chris here, not big Chris, little Chris here has the most beautifully stunning, immaculately clean, perfect Dodge Charger I think I've ever seen. This color here is called something blue and it's written in the description below. And <laughs> QQ1. <laughs> QQ1. QQ1. Some wombat probably made that up in Japan and they translated it and that's what it meant. I'm telling you, there's no Detroit uh, muscle in that name. But guys, I'm gonna jump in. Once again, I keep telling you it's really important. Check your buckles, guys. These people care about their cars so much. It's really important. Something as silly as that is important. Not as elegant, I can assure you. Wow. Oh, we've got MSD ignition under the dash. It's a 440 cubic inch. Oh, so 440 cubic inch, that is approximately, this is not 6.6, it's a 7.2. 7 7 yeah. 7.2, so 600 guys. Uh, so 600 cubic inch would be a 400, same as a lot of Mopar, a lot of Pontiac yeah. Ultra builds. 426 is a 7 litre. Yep. That's the Hemi. Yeah, so basically a 440 is the holy grail. Big muscle car, big yeah. V8. It's a more streetable motor. Oh, she's got a tack gauge as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it's the holy grail. Is this an AEC car? Uh, no, it's not, not an AC, AC car, car, so we, we're never not losing any power top. there either, which is nice. Yeah. You've never had a vinyl top? No, no. Which That's makes gorgeous. it a little bit rarer as well. Really, really cool, man. Yeah. Let's just take it for a drive. Take me, I'm going to take you over to the Elite class. You can drive it if you want, you know. You sure? Yeah, yeah, man. Sure? <laughs> 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 oh, look, see, guys. Being, being a nice guy gets you places. Can I? Pardon? Slide right, can I give you these a moment? These are the most important things, okay? We need a pink bag for keys. Guys, you may have seen in previous episodes or make or break, I got to drive my own 1968 or 69 Dodge Charger General Lee, but I've never driven anything as beautiful as this. This is a real privilege, so thanks, you, Chris. All right, no problem. Keep going. <laughs> All right. Once again, bit like the gas monkey truck, guys. Uh, this car hasn't got a clutch pedal, so making sure the handbrake is off. And with a lot of American cars, the handbrake is a brake pedal you put down the left-hand side. To this, it looks like it is already off. Normally, part American cars, you just put them in park. I never put it on. So, uh, right. Mate, I'm a little bit... Uh, uh, it's been all right today, because I've yeah, had yeah. loads of lovely people who let me drive their cars, but they haven't been in the car, so it's quite a... Uh, it's quite an Mate, experience. You'll not mess it up, it's easy. We're in the yeah, D, yeah, guys, yeah. nice and simple. A little bit of revs just to pull us. If we're on a yeah. gradient, this car would already be pulling itself along, yeah, yeah. right? No, she's nice and uh, she's oh. nice and steady. Stainless exhaust, looking here. Uh, is it stainless. It's not great. actually. It's a, it's, a, it's a flow master. Very nice. So it's the it's the proper thing. It's got lovely, a set of lovely. Lovely. Heavens on it. How long you had this car? We go for a little drive, so yeah, right? sure, yeah. Went it about so, ten years. Okay. Um, what have you done? Did you do this to it? Did you? Right. Okay. The story is the car came from Texas. Yep. And it was owned by Liam Howlett from the Prodigy. It was a guy wow. who I have communication with. I've actually invited him here this weekend, so he <laughs> might turn up, he might not. 
So this was Liam Howlett's car, but when I got it, it was um, it was black. It had chrome rims on it. No offence to Liam, but it, it wasn't it, my it, taste. It, it was slammed. It was, you know, it wasn't really my taste. It was so, rock star, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So I bought the car. Uh, had the, discovered the original build sheet under the seat. What, under so, the passenger seat? Yeah. So Normally which, it's the rear base. Yeah, that's rare. So which I, which I got it, I laminated it, preserved it. So I was able to rebuild this car from what it should have been. So it wasn't originally back, it was this amazing blue. And can you pronounce that blue colour for me? Yeah, QQ1. QQ1. And then there's it's no, called, there's no uh, name. It's called it? Chrysler Bright Blue. And the code is QQ1. QQ1. So guys, I am taking it very carefully. I want to take it on the grass because the, the gravel road is all over the place. And I know the grass is too, but we're taking it for a nice little scenic drive for you lovely people. Mate, thank you so much for, right, for letting no us problem. have it. How many people have you let drive your baby before? Uh, just a handful, close friends. Yeah. And, you know, well, thank you very like much, mate. No, no, right. Well, you, you know what you're doing behind the wheel, you see. That's you it. can let these cars into people's hands. Uh, let's call it. Hi, Carl. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, people can have uh, a lot of accidents by doing things. You know, if they're not if they're not used to, to driving and stuff it, like this, it's all about respect as well. You know, a lot it's of people all about taking stuff easy until you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, you like, you've got to feel whether like jet skiing or you know, oh yeah, or anything else. But you've got to understand that every American car is different. Sometimes yeah. the brake pedal's a bit longer. Yeah. Sometimes it's a bit sharper. Yeah. Sometimes the steering on a lot of older cars and this car is not like that this steering is tight as hell guys yeah it's pretty good it's as good as it's going to get because it's all new yeah well I'm saying it's new I restored this car eight years ago it so is this, still this, like is, this is eight year old wow, restoration wow, so. wow. and it's like this underneath it is rotisserie restored in my shop well so, so the colour is the same underneath is it it's not yeah, it's yeah. not under sealed it is no, actually body you color. can have a look mate it's as wow I'm it. buzzing about that guys I'm going to get Carl to do a little sweep round and just show sure. you all around the car okay. um, with the camera in a little bit but yeah. This, we'll pop the hood in a minute, have a little nose. Sure, yeah. What I want to do is the, so the piece of paper I gave you a minute ago, uh -huh. we have a quick look at that. For you guys at home, we have here the Elite Class, okay? Yeah, right and this car is in the Elite Class, it is put together very well. So at the beginning, at the middle, we've got the Viper UK Club, which is central stage. Uh, okay. The cup corner over here, we've got the uh, retro, uh, sorry, the resto mods, that's the, must, the Corvettes uh, over yeah, there, yeah. the Mustangs. And what we're going to do is we're going to line your car up here to the right hand, so you're the muscle car section, okay? okay? What we're going to do, we're going to line this one up here with your help, okay? okay. So we are going to go, so that is our furthest point. Okay, which is the must, which is the Corvette there. Yeah. I don't want to go full lock, I don't know if it's all right going full lock. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So our Dodge, char our Dodge Vipers there are going to be in the middle. So I want this charger to be to one side, just slightly scoot with. We're not going to go crazy with it. Okay. Thank you for your help today, mate. It's all right. No, I love like the way that everything is just so beautiful. And you've, you've really done yourself justice in the fact that you've kept a lot of original elements as well. Like I'm looking at the gauges here, guys, the oil pressure gauge, the fuel gauge, and the speedometer look to be original and the rest look like they're replacements. Um, but what I'm getting from that is that you've tried to keep as much, you know, integrity here. Yeah, yeah, it, you know? Yeah, definitely. A lot of people, when they restore a car, it's like every nut and bolt, but you know, I'm noticing like little bits, this looks to be original. Um, the center grate here looks to be original. Yeah, this is all restored. It's unbelievable. The, these were hand painted. Would you like me to put the handbrake on as well? No, no, that's fine. fine. It's, it's not going anywhere, mate. Mate, show me around the engine bay. Sure, yeah. your... Oh, I need you to keep them, but I'll give you a call later for this movie. Yeah, 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 no problem. Fine, guys, we're going to check I'm, around the I'm engine bay I'm on the now. end of the, the phone all the, the time. Old, the old Not cellular device. So, guys, we're going to check under the bonnet here, and if I know my chargers, I'm going to hand this over, hoping it's going to be like a little lever right in the middle. There we go. So guys, on this, you've got the flip round headlights. The headlights are hidden behind the thing, but behind the, the flaps, not the thing. Um, look at that engine bay. This is what I'm talking about when it comes to originality, okay? Because you're looking at the brake pipes here, which are rooted down the left-hand front leg of the firewall, um, and they're so neat, and they're protected with a small wire, which obviously, I think that um, keeps some heat dissipation away from them, doesn't it? Are you talking about the, uh, the coils? The coils around the back, it yeah, keeps the heat them from rubbing as well. Exactly. Yeah. 440, guys, big wedge, nice, lightly blue colored engine you looks like you've got some headers in there as well you've got the stock cast manifold so you've got a bit of oomph going down there the color of the block as well is exactly what it should be yeah the color code for the block it's amazing aluminium heads as well a bit more peak thanks again mate for allowing me to take your baby for a run time for make or break to take a break see you on wednesday for regular episodes but we might be releasing more snippets on other days in the near future so follow us on social media for updates about that we're on all major platforms goodbye for now